sustainable development is meeting the present needs without compromising the ability of our future generations to meet theirs. Institution of Engineers Malaysia has always strived to educate our members to use smart technologies available in the market. We also work with technology innovators to introduce the application of new technologies to our members. One of IEM's missions is to see the extensive and systematic use of smart technologies in achieving sustainable development. There are three pillars of sustainable development. The environmental pillar gets the most attention by reducing our carbon footprint and wastage. For the economic pillar, businesses must be profitable and sustainable. The social pillar focuses on sustainable living by reducing cost of living and a better quality of life. Since 2009, the government had been developing on the structure and framework to promote renewable energy growth in the power sector. And when the Renewable Energy Act in 2011, we have seen tremendous growth in renewables in Sabah, especially in solar photovoltaics. Tada Energy is currently undertaking the first 50 megawatt large-scale solar project in Malaysia, which involves the financing, design, construction and operation of two photovoltaic plants at Kudat Sabah. We practice reasonable care and diligence in selecting the site. Tada Energy hopes that with the developing of solar power plants, the state of Sabah is also contributing to the international effort to reduce the same. As commented by Malaysian International Islamic Financial Centre, Tada Energy for its recent sale of the world's first green sukuk has exemplified Malaysia's commitment towards green and sustainable responsible investments and is a testament for Malaysia's leadership in the sukuk market. We below 200. Ours is over one. CFU count must be below 200. Ours in terms of achievement, Eramas has been uh, awarded the contractor Cemerlang and also it has been recorded in the Malaysian English Book of Record as the biggest uh, solar hybrid station in Malaysia. Architects was appointed in 2007 by the state government to design and implement this uh, cycling project for, with a location of Ringgit Malaysia 35 million. Sustainable transport must be viewed and integrated as an essential ingredient in sustainable development strategies. Transport infrastructure lasts for decades, which means that the decisions that the local and national governments make today will have long-lasting impacts on urban development and form, as well as climate. Borneo Highway PDP's Nuremberg Hat is a project delivery partner company appointed by the government for the Pen Borneo Highway Project Phase 1 of Sabah consists of 706 km. In terms of economic, the Pen Borneo Highway Sabah would become the game changer for the economy of the state by providing connectivity from major towns of Sabah right from Sindumin Spitang all the way to Tawau on the east coast of Sabah. Asamja's golden key to success has always been the ability of the project management team to meet a wide variety of industrial challenges, the work currently under implementation are part of the overall junction improvement schemes recommended in the Kotak Nabalu Urban Transport Study. Such improvement, when completed, will result in economic benefits, uplift of living standards and environment, and will ease the overall traffic flow to and from the city area. The construction method a change to M81. Lesser traffic problems will be encountered during the construction stage. 2. Construction time can be reduced considerably. And 3. Create lesser environmental problems including noise and dust pollution.
sustainable development in Sabah um, goes along with the policies, with the national um, concept of sustainable development. Whatever we develop, whether it's building, whether it's road, whether it's other infrastructural development, we will also have in mind of our future generation. As one of the prime building contractors for the government of Sabah, our client strives to promote and implement sustainable policies in urban developments with multi-modular transportation system, interconnect green spaces and a good balance of public, commercial and residential developments. Pina Puri Group involves uh, the quality, uh, construction and the property. Our group are ISO certified with multiple management integrated system certification and have won multiple awards through the years. To comply with our client's request for the Sabah State Administration Building to be a GBI certified building, we have successfully implemented several GBI certification features such as rainwater harvesting system, building automation system, low volatile organic compound VOC materials and sustainable certified wood materials. So for future, we believe any project in Sabah, we are not worried. We feel competent, we can go further for any other mega project. If you sow the right seed, you will reap the bountiful fruit. Harrington Suite is a 30-storey luxurious condominium. We are determined to advocate energy conservation and environmental sustainability into our building design. The quality of the structural construction meets and even beyond the requirements as specified in the design. This is also the first uh, residential building to be rated gold in uh, Sabah. Abraham Lincoln once said, the only way to predict your future is to create it. So what the state government is trying to do is to create the future for the people of Sabah. The Tanyo Aru itself has deteriorated over the last 50 years. In this aspect, Tanyo Aru Eco Development was formed as a 100% government-owned company. The company's mission is firstly to address the present environmental issues, to rejuvenate Prince Philip Park and Tanjuaru Beach, to create a holistic, sustainable development, to boost up the economy of the state, and to create job opportunities for the people. It will bring income to the state government for about 30 over billion. This will create jobs, not only like hotels, not only for the the younger generation, but the people in the kampong. Because you need vegetable, you need fish, you need eggs, you have uh, tourist guides, you know. All, so it creates a very heavy, healthy future for the future generations. And we hope all this will actually happen. And the whole team is trying our best to make it happen. And, uh, I believe that with the support of the people of Sabah, it will happen because it's for their future. The KK City Pedestrian Cycling Project is being funded by the federal government and channeled to Sabah Economic Development Investment Authority and being implemented by Dewan Bandaraya Kota Kinabalu. EKM Landscape Architects was appointed by the state government to design and implement this project with a location of 35 million ringgit Malaysia. The goal of this project is to develop KK into a pedestrian and cyclist friendly city. We were awarded by the Institute Landscape Architect Malaysia Excellent Award in 2014. Once this project is fully completed, this will be the first pedestrian and cycle walkway in the whole Malaysia that runs along the Sydney area and the coastline area. And this will be something very, very special. 
to make a city more sustainable, the role of the local authority is to make sure that everybody follows our guideline and balance it off between planning, administration, and the economic and social value. Kota Kinabalu is uh, lucky to have a few permanent area that has been gazetted as a park. Many years ago, uh, the Ministry of Tourism, Environment and Culture was working very hard to convert the Lika Swamp into a bird sanctuary. And now this bird sanctuary has been recognized worldwide and it is now an international Ramsa wetlands. The Tunku Abdurrahman Park is a beautiful park inside the city, which many cities don't have. And we have created cycling lane, which is about 32 kilometers. Now we are going into the phase three from Yevan Sabah to UMS, the Tun Fuat Kiparam Park. It has 153 acres of land, and now it is a very popular jogging track. And we will continue to maintain this as a park for all the people to enjoy. We are also very active in the recycle program. We have campaign on the three R, recycle, reuse and reduce. And of late, we increased the three R into an, another three B, which we said locally, Bawa Bek Park. So we are encouraging everybody to use uh, and to reduce and to bring your own bag when they go shopping. And we have also gone to the school to promote uh, clean and green initiative in the school. And we have given grant to school to do this program. And I'm glad to share with you all, we are now MSO 9000 certified. The Tanjung Lipat Park has been awarded one of the best uh, park in Malaysia by the federal government and I'm very thankful to all my staff, to the state government, especially the chief minister who is our minister in charge of uh, City Hall as well as YB Datu Yong Oi Fa. And uh, most of all, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the state secretary who has always been uh, monitoring us, guiding us, Tan Sri Sukarti Wakiman and with the rest of the department as well as our board of advisors. I took this opportunity to thank everybody including the consultant and developer who has in one way or the other contributed to Kota Kinabalu city being rated as a five-star city. Thank you. We as partners in the Malaysian Federation are committed towards progress in improving the welfare of the people, namely through the State Development Agenda or our Halatuju, which is aligned with the national agenda. We also take cognizance of cyber's uniqueness. As such, we are mindful of the state's endowment, our diverse natural resources, particularly the ever-growing importance of the green assets or the preservation of our mega biodiversity and our cultural diversity in respect to human capital development. We are aware that there is a strong global trend towards the green agenda. Thus, we should like to position Sabah as a global player in this game changer by focusing on sustainable development of the Halatuju, economic sectors and building on a smart green state. We are in the midst of fine-tuning our 20 years future strategic state development plan and we are committed towards the creation of Sabah as a smart green state. It should be noted that Sabah has already raised the bar in terms of forest management, enhanced the environmental conservation. The state government has achieved 26% of its total landmass as totally protected areas. It has exceeded the IUCN, that is International Union for 
conservation of nature target of only 10%. Sabah has also restored and planted forests well over 700,000 hectares, presumably the largest such undertaking in the tropics. So as you can see, we have already laid the foundation towards becoming a smart green state. In our endeavor to embrace smart technology, we will also ensure that the people of Sabah have the right infrastructure to be able to migrate into the digital world. However, like I said earlier, it must be a balanced strap in this endeavor.